Russell, The Secret of Light, another little segment. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. Well, they're all interesting. This one is about weight, uh, which you could also call mass. So one of the strange things about the atomic and Newtonian view of physics is that um, gravity is caused by mass or weight of an object. But there's a huge fallacy here, um, and that is, how do you measure the mass of an object that's floating in space? So the answer is, you can't. There's all kinds of mathematical formulas you can speculate based on the area, the size of the object, relative to other objects. But the point is, is that you can't measure the weight of something unless it's resting on something else, some other piece of matter. So weight is relative to, uh, like basically, the human body weighs something relative to its rest on another piece of mass, which is the, the planet, the Earth that we're on. So if you're just floating in space, like our planet is, moving through space, there's no way that you can put a scale underneath it and, and weigh it. So technically, uh, it doesn't have any measurable weight. So here we are, reading about weight. Walter Russell, page 182. Weight is unbalanced. A body which floats has no measurable weight. It is in balance with its environment. Likewise, a dead battery has no measurable electric potential. The ammeter, needle, points to zero. Its two unbalanced conditions of charge and discharge have become voided by each other. The measure called weight and the measure called electric potential are the expression of force which the two electric opposites of charge and discharge exert against each other at any point in the universe. The potential of all orbits of matter in space is which matter floats is equal to the potential of the mass which floats in it. The plane of our Earth's equatorial region coincides with an equipotential plane of pressure which is equally balanced in respect to that part of the Earth which floats above that plane and that part which floats below it. In this plane, the Earth has no weight whatsoever in respect to anything in the entire universe. For it is in a balanced position in respect to the entire universe and keeps moving into a new position only because of the movement of all other masses in the universe. Okay, that's the first part. The way that I understand this is that uh, weight is unbalanced, which sounds really counterintuitive, but what Russell is saying is that we can only detect or measure, or actually, we can only, weight only appears or actually is detectable when the object is in a state of unbalance, which means that its location along uh, electric light waves, which are, you know, cresting and troughing, undulating throughout the universe, uh, it, it only has weight when it's moved outside of the realm of equilibrium or balance. And I don't actually know exactly when that happens but the point is is that when we look into the solar system and we see our planet or other planets floating around there uh, they're in a state of equilibrium or rest and that's why they're self-sustaining and they just keep going and doing what they're doing that's a harmony nature provides a harmonic and um, Newtonian physics uh, followed up by Einstein basically says the opposite they develop quantum mechanics as a theory, and the whole theory is based on, on things that are out of balance. So it's not really an approach that is valid for me. I think the electric universe model is far superior simply because we can actually see it in nature. We can actually see these things happening and measure them and verify them instead of just uh, create theories out of our minds. Okay, moving on. Our balanced Earth is weightless. The Earth could have weight only if removed to other pressures farther extended from the plane of the lens-like wheel of which our sun is the hub. 
If it could be pushed toward the sun by some giant hand, it would seek balance in its own orbit when released, exactly as a man would rise when plunged underneath his own balance level in water. Every freeing, moving mass in the universe floats in its own equally divided wave field exactly as a man floats in water. Okay, so that's a good analogy, and it kind of it's kind of like a better way of explaining what I tried to explain just a second ago about weight appearing. The point is, again, that nature in, in this vortex solar system with planets floating around behind the moving sun in a vortex cone are self-sustaining. They know, they know when to spin. They keep spinning. And they're also, they know exactly where to be in their orbit. The reason why this is, is because nature is balance. Nature is constantly seeking equilibrium and maintaining it. When things go out of balance, from my understanding, they basically disintegrate uh, and get, get destroyed and basically just transformed into a pure uh, energy and then reused in um, a new way, in a new form. So when that happens, we can't see it. So the things that we see in nature which is our, our reflection, our greatest teacher. Uh, the things that we do see and the things that we can measure are, are all measures of balance or equilibrium. Okay, moving on. The moon is not falling upon the earth, as generally supposed, for it is in balance with its environment and cannot fall. Its contracted mass is equal to the expanded mass it displaces in the wave field. Now that's just basically saying the same thing about like a man being submerged in water. It displaces the amount of water that is equal to its mass. For the same reason, a cloud floats in the sky. If one could put scales under it, one would find it had no weight unless lifted above or thrust below its equipotential level. If, the condensed, if it is condensed into heavier vapor, it would fall to seek new static equator where it would again float. If it condensed to rain, it would fall into the sea to find balance in a like condition. Weight is not a fixed property of matter. Let me repeat that. Weight is not a fixed property of matter. It is a variable as matter is variable. A man weighs less as he climbs a mountain, weighs more as he descends into a mine, and weighs nothing when he floats in water. Unless and until matter is extended from a plane of equal pressure, there can be no weight, nor can there be electric potential. All right, that's pretty heavy. I mean, you have to think about, you have to really think about these words, but the electric universe model is, um, is just so much more balanced and so much more harmonic. And, and to me, this is, this is what, what we see in nature. Okay, continuing on. Weight curves gravity. Now, I gotta sort of say, the term gravity uh, could be a little bit of a misnomer because in modern versions of the electric universe, uh, gravity is actually not what we think it is. It's, it's due to electric lines of force. But anyway, for this reading, um, we'll just use the term gravity. Weight curves gravity. The equilibrium of C level is a good example. If that static equator has no dynamic wave extensions, there can be no electric pressures exerted to express in weight. Nor could there be weight of waves when waves are not extended from it. Waves above sea level have a positive weight when they fall toward gravity. Waves below sea level have a negative weight when they rise towards space and find balance at sea level. Weight is therefore but a dimension of unbalance. Unbalance alone can be weighed, for there can be no weight to balance. I'll, I'll say that last line again. Weight is, therefore, but a dimension of unbalance. Unbalance alone can be weighed, for there can be no weight in balance. Okay, so the visual here is that basically there are waves moving underneath the surface tension of the ocean or of, of a lake or of a water. 
we know there are currents and eddies and um, spiraling curves in a river, for example, that are below the surface. Those waves are, are constantly moving upwards towards the surface of the water to seek balance or equilibrium. And the waves that actually kind of ripple above the surface rise above the surface tension and then crest and then trough back into the water itself. And basically, the only measurable weight is either under the surface tension or above the surface tension. And the surface tension of the water is like the barometer. It's what holds it and sustains it in equilibrium. And in that space, in that magnetic space geometry, in that domain, there is no weight at all. There's, there's no, no detectable weight. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then here's the definition, weight defined. The following definitions of weight are in keeping with natural law. Weight is the sum of the differences between the two pressures which act upon every mass. Weight is the measure of the differences in electric potential between any mass and the volume it occupies. Weight is the measure of unbalance between any mass and its displaced environment. Weight is the measure of the force which a body exerts in seeking its true potential. Weight is the sum of the difference between the inward pull of gravitation and the outward thrust of radiation. Weight is the measure of intensity of the desire within all matter to express motion or seek rest from motion. All right, so there you go. Weight defined. Walter Russell, The Secret of Light. Thanks for listening. Please share.